Are you still benchmarking your game with built-in statistics? Uh, yeah. And is your GPU running at stock factory overclock settings? Do I really need to do anything about it? Yes, you kinda do. Oh. And you're not able to see your CPU's temps, drive health, and more? I suppose not. Well then I suppose you, sir, are a certified PC noob. Hey, that's politically incorrect. Oh, sorry, um, technologically unintelligent. Okay, I guess that's better. Well then step aside. Here are some PC benchmarking and monitoring tools you should use for your rig. By the way, I have the download links for all of the softwares I will be talking about in this video down in the description. Also, as some of you may know, I already made a YouTube short about this similar topic a while back, but I wanted to dive deeper into it, whilst also making this video as fast as possible. Alright, let's start with some monitoring tools. Here is CPU-Z. This is useful for hardware information and light monitoring info. This is one of the first softwares I think of if I want to check the authenticity of a component. Let's say the GPU. We can check for the name, the code name, which in this case matches with the actual 4060 Ti code name online, unlike the one GPU Linus got. This one also says fake. I think it's just scrolled over. Uh, yeah. Ah, there it is. 4 nanometer process, TDP, memory info, etc. Basically, any physical information you need to know about your hardware is all here. Oh, additionally, CPU-Z also has a benchmark feature for your CPU. You can test single and multi-threaded performance. There is also a feature called Reference. Basically, it compares your CPU to other CPUs' performance. You'll soon realize that you're tiny while others are big. On the side, we also have GPU-Z. It's basically CPU-Z, but specifically for monitoring your GPU. You. Not much else to say about it. Although unlike CPU-Z, this tells you more monitoring information, such as GPU clock speed, GPU temps, voltages, and more. This tool really shows the definition of exclusivity, huh? Despite CPU-Z not being exclusive to the CPU. What the f*** is this inequality? Man, even through ones and zeros you can't escape it. This tool is for checking your storage drive health. Crystal Disk Info. You can also see multiple in-depth things about your drive. Here is my boot drive SSD. It contains info such as total read writes, PCIe transfer mode, and arguably a very helpful tool, health status, which in my case is 86%. Still very fine. Consider getting a new SSD if yours is around 30, 25, or lower percent. Despite all this info, it thankfully doesn't save your download history. Hmm, that's a lot of JPEGs you got there. And here's the interface for HDDs. Very similar, but no percentage for health and a few other factors. This is our first stress testing tool, Furmark. This software makes your GPU go to hell. If anybody's gonna be crying hard tonight after a breakup, it's not gonna be you. On a real note, Furmark pushes your GPU to its limits, using all of its juice to see its best capabilities by using Furmark's fur rendering algorithms. Hence the name, Furmark. Now, take a moment to appreciate how Pixar animated Sully. Just a quick thought. You can choose between different benches. In my case, I mainly use the 1080p bench because I play in 1080p. It shows you all sorts of information while the bench is happening and by the end, you can get a score for your test. That's basically it for Furmark. Cinebench, on the other hand, is a CPU benchmark tool, although it can also test GPU. This software allows you to bench single core and multi-core performance. Other than that, Cinebench also helps you compare your CPU scores with other processors. And I suppose you can also find out how good your cooler is after you summon the volcano inside of your room using this tool. Speaking of score, both Cinebench and Furmark provide scores, again to help compare with other hardware. But you know what they say, nothing turns your software into hardware without looking at other people's hardware first. Who says that? HW Monitor, otherwise known as Hardware Monitor, is also one of my favorites. This displays a crap ton of stats for your hardware, such as your motherboard, GPU, CPU, RAM, drives, and other possible PCIe peripherals. Honestly, this just shows you so much info that realistically, this is the software that I use all the time when it comes to checking temps, voltages, and everything. It's just mwah. Perfection. Now let's get into some honorable mentions. We have 3D Mark. Once again, another good GPU and CPU benchmarker. This is an extremely versatile testing tool, but it's only really held back by a paywall. However, you can simply use the demo version instead, 
which is honestly enough for most normal cases. We also have DDU, or Display Driver Uninstaller. This tool is mainly used to delete graphics drivers from your GPU if you ever decide to upgrade or switch to a different ecosystem, such as Nvidia to AMD or vice versa, even Intel. Recently, I upgraded my GTX 1650 to an RTX 4060 Ti. Shortly after that, I had to install DDU, go into safe mode, and uninstall the 1650 drivers and install the 4060 Ti drivers. Very useful and important tool to have. For reference, here's my GPU score of my 4060 Ti with the 1650 drivers lurking in the background, and here it is with its proper drivers. And lastly, we have HW Info. And before you ask, no, it is not the same with HW Monitor, but actually it's more detailed than HW Monitor. If you're someone who doesn't mind plaguing their eyes with all the info in the world, then this is the monitoring tool for you. Personally, I don't need this much detail in my everyday life, so I don't use this often. And for the last one on my list, this is MSI Afterburner. This is a monitoring and tweaking tool and is one of my personal favorite pieces of software out there. MSI Afterburner gives you access to tweaking your GPU's junk. You can increase voltages, overclock, and tweak fan speeds to your liking. Personally, I use MSI Afterburner for undervolting my GPU because I hate overclocking. If you're also interested in undervolting your GPU and reaching maximum efficiency with no performance drops, then check out this video from Panjno. Very simple and effective guide video. And I also use MSI Afterburner for benchmarking. Yep, MSI Afterburner is also a benchmarking tool, with the help of another piece of software that comes with it, Riva Tuner Statistics Server, or RTSS. RTSS helps display your benchmarking stats for your games, but it's important to know that you should initially set up some stuff in MSI Afterburner first. Just click on Settings, and then Monitoring, and then find the stats you want to monitor for your bench, and check it. And make sure to turn on OSD, or on-screen display to actually see your data. Then go to Benchmark and set Start and End to a key combo you want. After all of that, go to RTSS and make sure that you check benchmark mode. Once you're done with your bench, your benchmark result will be in a notes file inside of the MSI Afterburner folder, which in my case is found in Program Files x86. Well damn, that was a lot, but hey, at least you can finally say that something lasted long in your life. So, did you learn anything from this? Um, you know what? I kinda did. Awesome. So what tool are you gonna use for monitoring your stuff now? Uh, task manager's good enough. <laughs>